Hi guys, good afternoon, good afternoon. If you guys don't recognize who I am, I'm Faith Mora, just a different time <laughs> on the whole pub. I'm not rising and shining. I was wondering like, what is the antonym? What is the, what is the, uh, the opposite of rise and shine? Because I always say, rise and shine, good morning. And I'm like, oh, it's good evening. What do you say? And I was like, fall and darken? fall and dark and that just don't sound right like here is your discouragement drowning is that the opposite of lifeline I have no idea but you know I have different people that convict me and make me committed to my commitment they insist that I show up whether or not I feel like showing up I don't know if you all can hear my voice is a little bit raspy today um, yesterday I started feeling really not not well at all but not just well in terms of my physical like I was feeling like I'm having a headache I was getting a sore throat I wasn't feeling good but at the same time, even mentally, I was just feeling low. I was feeling low, low, low in my spirit. Have you guys ever had that where you just you just get this sense of discouragement and depression and it's just something weighing on you and you have no idea where it's coming from? It's like, what circumstances happened? What happened? Did I get a bill? Did I get something that could have influenced my mood and I was thinking is it circumstantial I couldn't f figure out no it wasn't I'm like is, is it someone that said something to me no it wasn't someone that said something to me so I was like what in the world is it me is it me I think it's me I think it's me that's just thinking the thoughts of you know being down I don't know where that negativity was coming from but anyway that being said I recently um, had bought a book called the hope quotient hope quotient if you guys know there's this other book called the emotional quotient is it emotion quotient or emotional quotient I, I don't know something like that but basically you know we've had books that focus on IQ and then there was a book that focused on EQ which was a bestseller which means that you know IQ is not the only thing that dictates who you become later on in life that also your emotional is just as important as your IQ you've had people who did not do well in school who didn't graduate even high school even some who didn't graduate eighth grade but yet their EQ, which means their personality and their the ability to collaborate and work a, across different you know sectors and and work with people, is what actually led to their success. So I'm sure you guys have seen that. So now there's another book called The Hope Quotient. I had no idea. I was at Barnes and Noble and they had this bin of books, and I guess it's like when books are no longer selling or whatever, they just put them in a bin and they put them on sale. And there was a book called The Hope Quotient, and I was like, oh. M G, why am I finding this out just now? So in the next couple of weeks, I'll try and bring you different tips and strategies from that book. But since I was feeling down in the dumps yesterday, I was like, let me talk a little bit about um, discouragement and how discouragement destroys everything. So he tells a story about this this woman. She's 75 years old, okay? And this is her. Hi, Shadrach. Welcome, welcome to the Hope Pub. Look, I don't know. look. My necklace just just cut like just just now this is crazy so if that goes to illustrate my point that he was talking about um, how uh, to illustrate that we all go through hard you know days where it's just like nothing's working like my necklace just cut I didn't this is like this didn't anyway this is like God illustrating a point like why did that happen this is like the second time I've worn this necklace so anyway he talks about uh, someone's grandmother, 75 year old woman, and how, you know, she comes home one day after hip surgery, her daughter brings her home, and she is accustomed to living at home by herself. And so she's going to the kitchen to make herself something. And then while she's on her way to the kitchen, she remembers, oh, I forgot to, um, I don't know, she, she forgot to do something in the other room and she's heading back out and then she swivels and because she's on crutches she swivels and then she hits her foot on the door frame and then she's now hopping around in pain and has to call her daughter to take her back to the hospital so you just came from hip surgery you're supposed to be just sitting down and then you're still trying to do and then you end up injuring yourself more and so she injures herself and then it's her ankle now and so the hospital now puts her ankle in a cast and then they're like look you have a broken ankle you need to just go take it easy and and find someone to help you so she goes home 
and now she's on a cast on crutches she has had hip replacement surgery but then she's like oh shit tomorrow is trash day i have to go take out the trash because nobody is here to take out the trash she's an independent 75 year old so she goes out to take out the trash and she's slinging the trash into the dumpster which is a metal big dumpster and the her keys to her house go into the dumpster and now she's like oh omg i need to get these keys so she's not asking for help so she goes into the dump like she goes to get the keys and as she leans over the metal thing she gets stuck and so she's yelling out for help and then her neighbors come and then they help her out of the dumpster because she's been on it like this and she's not having pain on her side and so they take her to the hospital when they get to the hospital the doctors the emergency room they're like are you are you freaking kidding me you are just here for an ankle we just put it in a cast we just told you sit your behind down and have someone help you and then now they find out she has a cracked rib and now they have her now in, in a, a cast as well so anyway the moral of the story from this book is that young or old sick or healthy there are just some days where things do not go right you're trying to do something and you're trying and you're trying and for whatever reason nothing is aligning and it can be the simplest things like my paparazzi jewelry that just broke a second ago but what's really deadly is when discouragement becomes um it, it, you allow discouragement to fester to basically fester in your life right and what he says in this book is that discouragement precedes destruction whenever you have someone who is discouraged and continuously lives in that discouragement basically the storms of life things that you're, you're just allowing the storms to start building around you and then soon the rain will start pouring and the negativity and the things that you are wishing would not happen will con will start to happen because you're allowing that negativity to thrive and you're giving energy towards that negativity so he says um, no person has ever come up to you and said I am so encouraged I am so encouraged about my marriage I'm getting a divorce do you know anyone who's ever said that absolutely no not no one has ever come up to you and said um, I am so encouraged about the church I'm attending I've decided to leave no one says that no teenager will ever come to you and say I am so encouraged about what I've learned from my parents and my faith that I'm gonna start drinking and taking substances no no one has ever st said that right and so if you ask any pastor or any parent or any other person in this type of profession they will say that usually discouragement is when it's present storm clouds storm clouds are on the horizon something is is going to be attacked and potentially destroyed and every marriage that has broken up every person who's given up every company that has gone belly up any venture that has failed every every church that has declined every country that has gone downhill and certainly every suicide that has ever happened or committed has been because of emotions and that emotion is that emotion of discouragement so yesterday I know I was feeling discouraged I was feeling down and I was I seriously I told my husband I'm like I don't know where the dis discouragement is coming from and I need to stop feeling discouraged because di discouragement is a disease let me tell you it is a disease if you're discouraged and you're down the people around you sense that energy and they also get that discouragement it's contagious and so when even you have that disease it's like chickenpox try when when I'm feeling down I try and stay away from people just so I don't make them discouraged but also at the same time when I am happy I know the people to avoid if I ask you today who are the people in your life that are discouragers guess what you will tell me exactly those people who they are you know them and if you know them stay away from them <laughs> Don't be calling them like, let's go have some coffee. Oh, heck no. I ain't trying to be around people who are discouragers. And then finally, he says, so not only is it a disease, not only is it contagious, um, and not only is it repeating that it'll happen, it's life. You know, you'll feel discouraged from time to time. It's also deadly in that it kills. And that's what he was talking about in terms of suicide, that 
um, in this case he talks about this man his name is John Toole he's a young man who wrote a book in 19 like 68 and he shopped around for a publisher for this book and he couldn't find anyone who was willing to publish the book and so it was rejection after rejection after rejection and then soon after his mom like us moms do you want to just protect your children you want to do anything for them you want to see them successful you don't want them to be discouraged or disappointed and so his mom took on that role of going to publisher after publisher after publisher for years and years and years and it says here let me see what the number of years it was I don't know in what year 1981 so he had written this book in the 60s in 1981 his mom finally found a writer who became um, an owner of a publishing company and asked him can you read this book because you're a writer so you understand what it means to be a writer and maybe you understand you love this book and this book is about the city of New Orleans and where you're from and then so this guy actually read the book and liked the book and recommended it for publishing and he published it and do you know this book John Toole's book it's called a confederacy of dances won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 1981 and so it says you see when um, he's saying unfortunately John Toole was not able to accept the Pulitzer Prize for his book which sold millions of copies why because he got so discouraged when he wrote it and a year after he wrote that book he committed suicide and so that's why his his mom com continued to believe so fiercely on his dreams that she continued to shop this book and try and find people to publish it and finally got published and it won a Pulitzer Prize. What are you giving up today? What is it that is discouraging you today that maybe could be that Pulitzer Prize that could happen for you years from now? What is it that you're dreaming about, that you're aspiring for, that you're hoping for, but you're inviting that spirit of discouragement to take over your dreams and your aspirations and to put you down to where the storms of life start raining on you? What is that thing in your life that you're allowing discouragement, distraction, that disease to fester in your life to where you're not able to realize the potential of who you could be? I'm encouraging you this afternoon not to give in to the disease of discouragement and that's what I'm doing here on the Hope Hub is also for myself understanding that me staying in an attitude of hope helps me become, it, it liberates me, it makes me happy, it, it allows me to see the positive in everything. So I put up a quote before I left the office today that said, when you say a situation or a person is hopeless, you are slamming the door in the face of God. So to all of you here on the Hope Hub, whoever has a dream, who has an aspiration, I will continue to encourage all of you to go after those dreams and aspirations because believe me, it's not anyone's business what it is that you want to do with your life or what you dream about and what you aspire to dream big because the author of your next chapter is God and he only is the one that can make those dreams and aspirations come true and he's more than able so let me go to I'm actually at Ross dress for less <laughs> I'm coming to get a, a book bag for my son and then I'm headed home um, so y'all take care. God bless you. Have an amazing evening. If you haven't liked or followed Hope Hub, I'm not saying the post, like the post, yes, but Hope Hub, the page, scroll up, like, follow. If you're feeling even more generous, go to the three dots at the top of the page and click those three dots. If you scroll down, it'll say, it'll say share, invite people to like this page do that <laughs> hi purity love you my sister by the way I was thinking of you yesterday because I need to scroll up on Quitu and find um, the prayers you did for children going back to school so I need to find because I didn't see it live and I haven't like prayed yet over my children so and since you don't have it on your own page I can't share it on the Hope Hub but I'm gonna go on Quitu and find that um, prayer because I wanna um, 
pray over my children as they go into this new school year they're starting on monday so hope up whoever has children going to school this coming monday or in the next couple of weeks we are praying that god will take care of those children he will protect them he will guide them that they will have a brilliant school year he'll take care of their minds their bodies he will he will just cover them with the blood of jesus over this school year so god bless you all i love you have a great great um what day is it thursday and i'm gonna change it from fall to darken it's not fall to darken still rise and shine even if it's the evening y'all <laughs> and this is not a discouragement life a discouragement drowning it's a it's a hope lifeline all right bye bye <laughs>